Hello, Smack and McGob. It's another concert review. And uh, boy, I bought these tickets way back in early in the year. They came out like, they started selling tickets to this like 10 months ago. And I had to go because right here, Armored Saint, you know. But hey, Wasp Beyond the Bills and added bonus. So I bought my ticket and the day finally came. And I did it smart this time because Orlando's like four four and a half hour, I mean, three and a half hours away from me. And usually when I go to these shows in Orlando or Tampa, that's far as hell as well, go to the show and I drive right back, but not this time. And I want to thank my mom for this because my mom said, you're not driving home after the show. You're staying there. So I did. And I even did it smarter because I went the day before the show, got a hotel, went to the show, went back to the hotel, next morning, came home. But, um, so, can't give away some things, I have to say here, it's an ancient Chinese secret, but I did get VIP for Wasp, okay? And uh, I tried to get, actually, I, I snoozed and I lost because I wanted to get VIP for Armored Saint, but I didn't think about it until the week before the show, so when I went to go do it, it was sold out, so I couldn't do it, though I have done uh, the VIP with Armor Saint before. Huge, huge, big, big, big time. One of my favorite bands. And I met up with my friend David Scott. Uh, great, great dude. One of my favorite people in the whole world. Uh, he went. You know, he's... Actually, we met each other online. He lives up in Lauderdale. Well, a little north of Lauderdale, which is, I don't know, 30 minutes from me. We met online, and it was because of Armored Saint. And this was back in the year 2000 when Armored Saint did the reunion album, Revelations, and he ended up getting an early copy of it, and he, this is how long ago it's been, uh, he put it on a cassette for me. Now, this was pre-CD Burner. At least we didn't have CD Burners then. And uh, he drove all the way from Florida Ardell to my, where I worked, I worked in a hardware at the time, came to my hardware store, that's how I met him. And he gave me the cassette. And I love you, David Scott. You're so awesome. And this is cool. This picture right here, we took in front of the marquee that Wasp Nation ended up putting on their site. Uh, like, you know, people are at the lining up at the Wasp show already because that was an early, an early thing. I mean, I showed up there like a little bit after noon, like around 1231. And me and Dave hung out. We had uh, Chinese, not Chinese, Japanese food. And while we're having Japanese food, who comes walking in? Phil Sandoval from Armored Saint. You know, it was so cool. And, uh, you know, we got to chatting with him a little bit. And I took a picture with him. And uh, not the first time I met Phil. I mean, I met him several times. Can't be nicer. That dude is awesome. Everybody in Armored Saint is awesome. I always said, if I was the only to own records from bands that everybody's cool, I'd only own Rush and Armored Saint records. Um, and so I didn't do the meet and greet with Armor Saint, which was a drag, but I took these two records anyway, just in case I can get them signed. And of course, my boy, David Scott, he took it, he had the meet and greet, so I don't know, you probably can't make that out. They signed it. So I got my two albums. Because the thing is that I, so far I have every single Armored Saint album uh, without David Pritchard. I do have the Lyrics Nomad uh, signed, but. These albums were with Jeff Duncan, so I have Win Hands Down, Revelation, and uh, La Raza, and uh, the live one, and now I had these two. So, uh, yeah, I know, I'm a nerd. So, uh, so yeah, and then the meet and greet with Armored Saint, uh, he went in there, he got it signed, and they were doing it all outside. I was just standing there going, man, I should definitely walk up there and say hi to the guys. But I didn't, out of respect, because all those people paid. You know, so I'm not going to go barge into somebody's meet and greet. And plus, I already met them before, so. Anyway, so then uh, was the Wasp meet and greet. And, uh, boy, this was cool. First, the first thing they did, number one, they ran it really well. The first thing they did, they took us in and they made us, they had us take pictures of that mic stand that Blackie calls Elvis. And... Wrapped around the mic stand, as you can see, that is the original bass. The, what is that called? BC Rich Widow something? 
uh, that's that's Blackie's bass from back in the first two albums. And uh, so we did that. Then uh, then we went and we met Blackie. We got to sit down and uh, take a picture with him. Now, I don't know if you all seen my um, my my history of Blackie Lawless. If some of you don't know, I'll make it real quick. Uh, back in 2001, a venue I videotaped many times. Uh, I videotaped Blackie and he got really mad at me. He pointed at me, yelled at me, said he was going to stick my camera up my ass and blah, blah, blah. And uh, then uh, they, they grabbed me. They took me backstage to get the camera. They couldn't take the film out of the camera. I'm like, give me the camera. Blackie walks out. He's like, get that fucker out of here. Well, fast forward nine years after that, the culture room really dug my band. And they would always ask us to open for shows. So they asked us to open for Wasp. And I'm like, whoa, man. All right, we'll do it. But dad, don't tell anybody. You know, don't tell Blackie, you know. Uh, about me, the boo will get kicked off the bill. And then after I played, I was like, go ahead, tell him I don't care. And now fast forward to now, which I can't talk about how, but, you know, ancient Chinese secret. Uh, I, I get to meet Blackie Lawless. I mean, what's next? Am I going to join Was? And when I took the picture with Blackie, I'm kind of like, uh-oh, I hope you don't remember me. Yeah, that picture was taken on purpose. And if you all didn't see it, I just put it up a couple days ago. I did a, I, my question to him was, uh, I'm not giving it away. Go look at it. I, I, I told him a question that made him cringe. Now, before I told him the question, this is where the video is going to get controversial. I know some of you are going to want to argue with me about it, but I really don't care because there's no way you're going to convince me because I, I know what I saw. But one of the questions somebody asked was, oh, I heard you're using backing tapes. And Blackie didn't, didn't lie, you know. He said, yeah, we're using backing tapes. Unlike Paul Stanley of Kiff, that's still on the cruise, he even said. Oh, we, you know, oh, yeah, we're using tapes like a joke. Unbelievable. But anyway, here's Blackie's answer. He said, yes, we use backing tracks. Now, what he does is, you know, when he goes in the studio and he records vocals, he does four or five layers of vocals. What he does live, he doesn't lip sync. He's using backing tracks, but he's singing to, the, you know, the, the other backing vocals. And I know that was a fact. He said that, but when I saw the show, I was close enough to hear the voice. And he doesn't do it every song. I noticed he did it on the opening medley, and I noticed he did it during uh, uh, Fuck Like a Beast and uh, The Real Me. I see him. I hear him. And I even hear a little offness here and there to the perfect vocals coming in. So he's not lip syncing. He's singing to, you know, piped in vocals. It's him and the vocals together. Now, as far as the backing vocals of the band, uh, the jury's out on that. That looked kind of suspicious, but I'm not saying they were using tapes or not. Because I'm not sure, but I am sure. I was close enough to know. Blackie is not lip syncing. Now, I know a lot of you out there, especially you that didn't go to the show, are going to say, ah, you're full of shit. Ah, you're a sheep. I'm not. I'm not. The guy was singing. He was singing live, but there were added. You know, also does that I noticed? Uh, Axl Rose. I saw footage of a recent footage of Paradise City, and it's him singing. But you hear that other voice with it. So, you know what? I don't have a problem with uh, bands that use uh, vocals as long as they're singing with it. I'm fine. But some of you aren't. And that's awesome. Keep fucking hating. It's up to you. I'm just not going to argue with you. If you leave comments down there saying I'm wrong and he is lip syncing, I'm not even going to reply to that because what's the point? Really, what's the point? Am I going to convince you? No. Are you going to convince me? Anyway, so I want to show you a couple goodies I got. Uh, this is the VIP meet and greet, and Blackie signed all of them for all of us, which was nice. And we were allowed to get two things signed. And I got, of course, the last command. I, you know, I mean, I, I took this because it's only Blackie on the cover. You know, I mean, getting... The first album, which is my favorite, or Heather's Children. I just felt like, nah, I'd rather take this that only features him and the infamous Animal single that is on red vinyl. 
Now, every time I take, I take uh, vinyls to get signed, I always leave the actual records home. I just take the sleeves. And uh, so, Armored Saint. Now, the show itself. Armored Saint, I'm a huge fan. And it was so amazing. You know, it's the first time I've seen them do Madhouse since uh, the Symbol Salvation Tour. The new songs they played was uh, Standing on the Shoulder of Giants. And uh, what else was, did they play? They played, they didn't play Missile to Gun, which was a drag. I love that one. And of Attention Span they played. I mean, this whole album is so good. I would have loved to, hear, to have heard, you know, uh, uh, Flying the Ointment's a great tune and uh, My Ju Jurisdiction. But, you know, they came out right out the gate. You know, I mean, they piped in the intro to um, uh, March of the Saint, which is cool. But then they came out and they opened with Rain of Fire. They played Last Train Home. They played March of the Saint. Madhouse, Can You Deliver, Nervous Man, um, Wind Hands Down, uh, Chemical Euphoria. It was just mind-blowing, and I was so happy it was John Bush up there. Because when he was, he a couple weeks ago, he was sick. He couldn't do shows, and they got the guy from Dangerous Toys. And I saw some footage. The guy's a great vo vocals. But he can't do John Bush. I'm sorry. John Bush is a freak of nature. And, I mean, he did great with Accept when he covered for Accept. I thought that was fine. But with Armored Saint, Ar man, John Bush is a monster, man. And so is Joey Vera as a bass player. Sick, man. And Gonzo's amazing. His brother Phil and Jeff Duncan. I mean, these guys are grossly underrated. I would say the most underrated band of the, of the 80s. And they have a documentary coming out soon. I can't wait to see that, man. So Armored Saint just delivered. Yeah, they delivered. And the great response. Even Phil wrote on Facebook, it was one of the loudest audiences on this tour yet. They smoked. They were great. Oh, and I also got some, I forgot to show, uh, they also gave us some guitar picks. Wasp, Blackie Lawless guitar picks. Says 40th anniversary on the other side. Hey, man, I'm not getting up. I'm lazy. Um, so... Uh, Wasp came out. They opened with medley of, uh... Now, here's the thing, too. I'm not gonna lie, you know? I prefer a different set list. I prefer a lot of my favorites that weren't played. But, man, if you were there, the vibe of that show was so good. It kind of, like, secondary to me. I did see Wasp play Widowmaker uh, when they opened for Kiss on The Last Command. I've seen them play Tormentor. I saw the first tour when they opened for Quiet Riot. And I've seen a bunch of cool deep tracks later on in other shows. This one, you know, I mean, yeah, the set list uh, wasn't something I would have liked to see. But, man, it didn't matter. Because when they started, I was a little toward the back. And it's cooking. And I'm thinking to myself, man, I can't really notice if he's lip syncing or something. Because it... Sounded really, really good. So, man, I fought my... It was hard, but I fought my way back to all the way up front where I was, where my friend David was, too. He was still there. And I'm right there, man. And I'm looking at Blackie singing these songs. And by the way, when he did The Idol, I mean, his voice cracked a little bit. And, you know, he kind of like... His tone kind of went down and up. There's no way that's a tape. And there's no way there was other vocals during that section. And I was really happy... That when they played Chainsaw Charlie, he didn't do that Disney version that came out on Re-Idolize because he re-recorded it. No, no, no. He used all that filthy language that I love so much on that song. You know, and they did, you know, they did uh, kind of uh, Idol Medley. They did Wild Child, which was awesome. Blind in Texas. Um, yeah, what else? Animal. I Want to Be Somebody. The Real Me. Side Electric Circus, Torture Never Stops, Love Machine. It was amazing. I just thought, and honestly, I'm going to be honest with you. I didn't think Wasp was going to be that good. You know, when I opened for them, they weren't that good that night. I don't even know why. They were, uh, the time before that was really good. And the time that, you know, he got mad at me for filming, they were terrible that night too. So I wasn't really expecting what I saw. You know, yes, 
he promised all this, you know, a throwback with the throwing meat and drinking blood. None of that happened. I don't care. I know some of you care, and my heart bleeds for you. And I'm not saying that to be, like, facetious or, you know, like, making fun of you. Hey, man, if you like visual stuff like that, which I do too, but I also am the type of person that I will take the music first, right? So, in the end, um, I say it was a stellar performance from both bands. And honestly, I was going to that show thinking, Armored Saint is going to destroy Wasp. Because I saw Armored Saint destroy Queensryche. Because Queensryche made the fatal mistake of having a real shitty, shitty set list. Where Armored Saint is just a lethal live band. But I got to say, they did not blow Wasp away. Wasp held their own. And I say it was an equal, awesome. I don't think Wasp was better than Armored Saint. But vice versa, I think both bands were great. It was a sold-out show. It's been selling out everywhere. And uh, if it's coming your way, man, if you're a little skeptical, and if it's not sold out, because a lot of these shows are sold out, I say go, man. But definitely get there early for Armored Saint. You need to see Armored Saint. You all need Armored Saint in your life. Get educated. March of the Saint, man. And check out their last album. They don't release any bad albums, I'm telling you. Armored Saint has... The perfect discography. When I first bought La Raza, I was like, oh, they finally did an album. Not that good. It's grown on me, and it's great. So Armored Saint, and they are passionate. They are awesome. Uh, other bands would just hang it up. They don't. They go out there, and they deliver. They are awesome. And Wasp, man, that guitar player is phenomenal. You know, and, oh, and that drummer. Honestly, I'm not lying when I say this. I never heard a better drum sound live than I did during the Wasp performance. I mean, the sound of the drums was so crystal clear and badass. And no, I don't think it was a tape. <laughs> it's definitely not a tape. It's close enough to see the guy was playing drums. Bass player was great. I mean, he's got a tight-ass band. And uh, I just... Um, blown away. Loved it. Worth the hell of a drive... The GPS gave me a shitty way up there that I was like over an hour than I was supposed to drive, but on the way back was even worse. What could have been a three and a half hour, it was eight hours because I get I got caught in car accidents all down the turnpike, and plus you have to put to account that it was a long weekend. A lot of people went up there for Thanksgiving with their family, driving all down on Sunday. It was accident after accident after accident. It sucked. I mean, I, during it, was calm, pissed, but going, don't get mad, Ralph. Don't get mad because, after all, getting mad ain't going to fix the situation. Just chill. And I did. But by the last one, I'm kind of like, don't get mad, Ralph. And then when I got home, this is the weirdest thing. I get home. I'm finally home. I'm supposed to be happy I'm home. No. That's when I got really mad. And I took a long shower. Oh, uh, Actually, a bath. I filled my bathtub. Stayed there for an hour, you know, letting all that negative energy out. And it didn't didn't work because after I dried myself off, I was still in a foul mood. It was horrible. But now in retrospect, I'd do it again to see that show. Anyway, thank you so much, everybody, for watching. And uh, leave your comments below if you did see the show and uh, if you were close enough to see he wasn't lip singing. Because uh, let me tell you, I was more in the back. You can't really notice that. You need to be way up there. And if you are way up there and you think that Blackie was lip syncing, uh, you're lying. Get yourself some glasses. Now, I will say this. There's clips of Blackie singing Animal where he gets away from the mic and you hear vocals, but that doesn't mean he was lip syncing. Those vocals are there anyway for him to sing to. So if he gets away from the microphone, those added vocals are still coming in. But... You can hear it. I mean, I can hear it. I'm not trying to convince you. I'm just trying to tell you. I'm convinced that there's no way Blackie was lip syncing that show. And a lot of those, a lot of those songs he didn't use that, you know, the enhanced vocals with them. But I've babbled enough. So thank you for watching. If you'd like to donate, I got a PayPal in the description below. And please subscribe to my channel if you have not. So stay frosty. Listen to Black Sabbath. And smack them a gob, and I'll nail your ass to the sheets.